One of the most discussed football clubs at the moment is undoubtedly Manchester City. The current dominant force in English football has been the home to many legendary players in the last 15 years, like Sergio Aguero, David Silva, Vincent Kompany, and of course the current players like De Bruyne, Rodri, or Mares, who are some of the best football players in the world right now. However, there is one player that doesn't get the same recognition, although for some years, he was considered to be their best one. I am talking about about Yaya Torre, the exceptional midfielder who somehow seems to have been forgotten compared to Manchester City's other stars. Torre started his career playing for the Ivorian club Asek Mimosas, primarily in their youth academy alongside his brother Colo Torre, another famous name in football. In 2001, he won his first senior trophy, winning the Ivorian league title with Asek. Jean-Marc Gillou, who was an influential figure in the ASEC Academy, aimed to showcase a lot of African talented players in the European leagues, and he did so with Yaya Toure, who joined Belgian club Beveren in 2001, helping him push his career in the next step. The Ivoran, despite his young age, always showed responsibility and dedication and was described by Daniel Stewart, Bavarian's fitness coach at the time, as very mature and professional. He would make 70 appearances and score three goals before joining Ukrainian side Metalo Donetsk in December 2003. Yaya impressed in Ukraine. He made his European debut in August 2004, where he provided an assist in his club's 3-0 win versus Tiraspol in the UEFA Cup. He would score three goals in his 33 appearances, while his performance earned him his first international call-up and drew the attention of the Greek giants Olympiakos. However, prior to doing that, the Ivorian almost signed for Arsenal, who were one of the scariest teams at the time. Labelled as the next Patrick Vieira, Torre was very close to joining them, but due to paperwork problems not allowing that to happen, he chose to play for Metalur in Ukraine. As Arsene Wegner himself admitted, not signing Yaya Torre is still one of the biggest regrets of his career. In Greece, Yaya started to show more and more of his skill, and playing alongside an elder teammate like Rivaldo certainly helped him gain more to his game. 2006 was his best year so far, winning the domestic double with Olympiakos as one of the team's key players, playing his Champions League debut while also providing an assist for Rivaldo, and on top of that, taking part in all of Ivory Coast's three games in the 2006 World Cup. After the youngster's historic performance in his nation's first ever World Cup, he would join French side AS Monaco. Yaya's one season in France did not go so well. He was being played out of position and Monaco was on the verge of relegation. However, Laszlo Bologna was sacked and with Laurent Barnaid as their new coach, Yaya Torre started developing his reputation as an attacking midfielder. Scoring five goals in the last seven games of the season being a key figure in saving Monaco from dropping to the second tier of League One. Marking himself as one of the most talented midfielders at his time, his big move would finally arrive when in 2007 he would join Barcelona. It was finally time for Yaya Torre to prove himself and his qualities in the big stage. He had a good first season under Frank Ridcard, even though Barcelona won nothing that year. Things would change with the arrival of Pep Guardiola in 2008. Barcelona was a different team under him, and in that season, they would produce one of the most successful seasons of all time in football history, winning the famous treble. Even though the Ivorian's performances have proved his worth, Guardiola favoured a young Sergio Busquets over him in front of the defence, having Yaya sometimes play as a centre-back or dropping him in the bench. Regardless of what he thought, considering himself to be more of an attacking type player, Torre always gave his best, and he even helped Barcelona keep a clean sheet in the 2009 Champions League final against Manchester United, marking none other than prime Cristiano Ronaldo. Despite everything, Yaya Torre won all there was to win at Barcelona, adding three more trophies that year. The Supercopa de España, the UEFA Supercup and the FIFA Club World Cup, and he showed what a strong player he was. 
he provided his defensive qualities to be top class and in a lot of his Barcelona highlights, you can see him breaking down attacking runs for fun and showing great tackling skills. Such performances would make any legendary defender proud. Yaya Torre was a powerhouse. His pace and stamina were unmatched. While being a player of such great defensive qualities, the Ivorian also had much to give in attack, but he hadn't been given the chance yet. A move to Manchester City would change everything. In 2010, his relationship with Guardiola grew colder and colder, and in the summer transfer window, he joined the citizens for £24 million, and he was given the number 42 on the back. The reversed idol of his idol Patrick Vieira, who at the time was enjoying his final football days at Manchester City. Under Roberto Mancini's command, Yaya Torre was given more freedom in the field. He quickly demonstrated how good of an attacking midfielder he could be. It was like a bird set free from a cage. That season would end Manchester City's long silverware drought. They hadn't won a major trophy in 35 years. In the FA Cup semi-finals, they were set up against the glorious Manchester United, who of course was still ruling the Premier League. Torre would score the only goal in their surprising win and would repeat it in a final against Stoke City. The 2011-2012 season would start strongly for Manchester City as they led the table for the majority of the season. The fans, the board, the players, everyone around the club was excited as the dream to win the title was coming true. But Sir Alex's Red Devils surely turned that dream to a nightmare. As the season was coming, the citizens found themselves in the second place eight points behind the top. They were driven to turn it all around, and won three consecutive games while Manchester United lost points, and now they were only three points away. On April 30th, with three more games to go, the match of the season was set to be played. Two teams of Manchester on a head-to-head -head battle for the title. Yaya Torre carried out a dominant and magnificent performance in his team's historic win to go top of the league. The Ivorian then scored a brace in the next game against Norwich City, and now it was time for the last game of the season. Both sides were on equal points, with City being on top on the goal difference. They needed just one more win to cling their first league title in 44 years. After providing an assist for the first goal of the game, Torre was forced out due to injury, putting much stress in City's fans with their star leaving the game early in such an important moment. 2-0 each after the 90 minutes, everything seemed to have collapsed. Their title hopes broken. They were so close but still couldn't manage to win. These words were probably all around Manchester City's fans' heads. But Aguero had no time to think, and after a 1-2 with Mario Botelli, in the 94th minute he scored an amazing goal to secure City's Premier League title. It was unbelievable, and as Peter Dury famously said, I swear, you'll never see anything like this ever again. That season was unforgettable for Yaya Torre, where he did not only win the Premier League, but he was also declared African Footballer of the Year for the first time in his career, and would be the first midfielder to do so after 12 previous forwards winning the award. He went so close to win the Africa Cup of Nations, but Ivory Coast lost to Zambia during penalties. The international glory was yet to come. His time at Manchester City would be followed by two more Premier League titles, a Community Shield and three League Cups. The Ivorian delivered stellar performances for the club forever to be considered a club legend and while he played there, he satisfied football fans with his entertaining style of play. From exceptional defensive skills to his amazing passing range and vision, vicious attacks played coupled with his extraordinary forward runs, which produced great plays and goals. Torre had a powerful shot, amazing heading ability, and could also score free kicks and penalties. It is so rare that a physical destroyer like him can adapt to also play as a number 10, making him a combination of power and creativity. Yaya Torre delivered his best in the 2013-2014 season, scoring 20 goals and providing 13 assists for his teammates, along with completing more passes than any other player that season in England. In 2016, Pep Guardiola was hired as the new Man City coach, and from there on out, Yaya Torre began playing less. It seemed like Barcelona all over again. The situation between them was cold, and so two years later, he departed from the club. The Ivorian had some short spells in Greece and China, before finally hanging his boots. 
On an international level, Yaya Toure made 100 appearances for the Elephants, playing in three World Cups, and he captained the team from 2013 to 2016, the year he retired from international football. He would go on to be named African Footballer of the Year for three more consecutive times, in total, a record of four times, sharing the honour with Samuel Itoho. In 2015, Ivory Coast were finally crowned champions in the Africa Cup of Nations, with Yaya Toure reaching international glory after so many great performances for his nation, in which he scored 19 goals. Sometimes a player's legacy can be put to question from the way they leave a club or how they end their career. Sometimes, there are great players and great managers who just can't get along, and that can be so decisive in how players are remembered. However, I think Yaya Toure is without a doubt a true legend of the game, one of the most completed players ever in the history of football. His legacy will continue to live on in the hearts of the football fans.